going to very briefly and uh, try to keep on my time to actually um, talk a little bit about what we're doing, but also the importance of looking at tourism as a driver of rural development from a policy perspective. Um, I want to start just to share a few numbers, um, being in the tourism uh, sector and obviously one of the most affected sectors by the pandemic. We have seen that last year uh, we had the worst year in our history um, in terms of numbers. Unfortunately, um, data shows that we were back into levels of international tourism of 30 years ago. So this gives you a little bit also the framework where the challenges facing by the sector today. Um, beginning of this year, between uh, January and July, we're still very much below the levels of 19. Um, to be more exact, we're 80% below the pre-pandemic levels. Uh, what does this mean for tourism as a driver of rural development? Actually, obviously a major challenge for many rural destinations which were um, dependent on international tourism but also um, a very good opportunity for us to bring rural tourism into another level because with the pandemic, as you know, many, many other people are looking into different experiences, open air, more contact with local um, experiences, and this offers us an opportunity. Also in the domestic market, which is often forgotten uh, when we look into tourism. So in 2020, um, the UNWTO Secretary General had designated um, the year as the year of tourism and rural development just before the crisis hit us, but we still wanted to make sure that we would continue working on this important area. So we've issued with the collaboration of many, many institutions, including FAO, um, a set of recommendations on tourism and rural development. And they touch basically five key areas, and I invite you, they are available in our website to look into detail into them. The first one, which is critical for us, is we need to place tourism as a strategic pillar in the policies of rural development. What does this mean? It means that we need to be at the table when rural development is discussed. We need to be at the table when there is a discussion about agriculture and vice versa. And so we need to have that policy integration from the beginning, but also in terms of processes and collaboration between different ministries and between national and local authorities. The second point is related to the role of tourism in the well-being of communities. We always need to address this issue with a focus on the well-being of communities in sustainability and in inclusiveness. So um, there's a set of recommendations that aim to achieve this objective. The third one um, deals with the opportunities that rural tourism actually brings um, in terms of innovation, in terms of technology, and in terms of digitalization. Uh, providing access and particularly providing skills to rural communities in terms of developing their products, in terms of reaching the market, in terms of collaboration among themselves, will be critical, but technology and digitalization offer us new opportunities. The fourth one has to do with product development, and this is very much where it is critical, uh, the relationship between what we are discussing here today, agritourism particularly, because we need to make sure that the value chain is fully integrated into the tourism experience. And this happens particularly with issues that we mentioned before. Uh, gastronomy tourism, for example, which is a huge opportunity, um, but beyond just the experience of um, enjoying local gastronomy, learning about the products, how they are done, actually contributing to do them as well. So there is an opportunity to develop that value chain and make sure that the community as a whole benefits. And obviously, the last point is about fostering sustainable policies and practices in rural destinations. And this has to do with issues such as carrying capacity. We have seen in many rural areas during the pandemic that there was um, a surge in demand and some villages were not ready for that. Uh, we need to look into issues also obviously of the impact in terms of resources, um, water, uh, plastic pollution, many, many other issues which are globally important. But when we look at them at um, a space which is small and with a small population are even more important. So apart from that, I would just leave you with five key ideas which I think are important for 
any destination which is interested in um, advancing uh, with a rural development. The first one is to empower communities. And I think here training is the key element. The second one is to create governance models at local level. We need to have a structure that deals with tourism at the local level, either by an NGO, either by the government, either by public-private partnerships, which is the ideal, but it is critical to have it. Then we need to define what is success. Uh, it's important that for us, success is not about the numbers of people. It is about the benefit that stays in the community. We need to create and value local leaders because they will be the ones who can actually move the area ahead. And we need to innovate and particularly beyond technology in the type of products that we can offer. Finally, from our side, we have been spearing a lot of initiatives. We just had a Students League on Rural Development and Tourism, um, a startup competition also to identify ideas all over the world, which we will be um, announcing the winners very soon. And um, our most important initiative at this point, which is the Best Tourism Villages Pilot Initiative, uh, and um, the idea is to identify villages that actually have an active role in using tourism to preserve their culture, their nature, and to foster the well-being of communities. So the winners of this initiative will be announced at the end of November at our General Assembly. And the idea is that we can also work with the ones that we identify as potentials to improve and provide them with support through skills, through small um, grants and advance their tourism um, and sustainability as well. So with that, I hope that I have kept on my time, Elias, and uh, back to you. <laughs>